And for the guys in the audience, sponsors, allies, mentors, coaches, thank you all for being here. I want to spend about 30 minutes talking to you all about embracing your power. Now, I have some awesome millennials on my team, and they've taught me about some new technology I'm going to try today. <laughs> now, if I mess it up, you can't go back and tell on me, right? Because we have to support the vision and ideas of other women. We have to test them out. So don't go tell on me. So let's talk a little bit about embracing your power. So there's a lot of stuff on this slide, but this is what I want you to know. I grew up as a techie. I was the little girl who liked to play with Barbie. Barbie was fine with me, nothing against Barbie. But I got a real kick out of taking the radio apart and putting it back together again. And I was fortunate because I had a great, great male role model, my grandfather, and he encouraged my tinkering. So I have been a tinkerer since I was a little girl. Professionally, I have worked as an architect. I've been a database administrator. I have been a network administrator. I understand our journey as women in tech. The other thing I want you to understand about this slide is I'm a mother and I'm a wife. I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a friend, I'm a leader, I'm a coach. So I also understand our struggle and our juggles. And oh boy, do we juggle. We are powerful. And I believe in the power of intentional acknowledgement. And I'm going to say it again, intentional acknowledgement, which sometimes we don't get where we work. Acceptance and confirmation. So I want you all to do an exercise with me. I want everybody to close your eyes. Close your eyes. And I want everyone to take in a deep breath, in through your nose and then slowly out through your mouth. Doesn't that feel good? Let's do another one. <coughs> and one more. Repetition, there's joy in repetition. While your eyes are still closed, I want you to repeat after me. I have power. I have power. I am powerful. I am powerful. I will own my power. I will own my power. All right, now come back to me. Now I want you all to stand, which is great after all of this wonderful food that you've given us. <laughs> I want everyone to stand. All right, now I want everyone in the audience to get into your superpower pose. Your power pose. Whether it's this, whether it's a lounge, whether it's one hand on the hip, whatever it is, everybody get into your pose. Get into the pose when they've gotten on your last nerve that day and you've got to go into your office and close the door and do the Wonder Woman spin. Get into your pose. Embrace that power. That's right. That's a good pose. I might borrow that. Just open, right? Open to the universe. And let's repeat it again. And let's repeat it this time, sisters, like we really mean it. Okay? I have power. I have power. I am powerful. I am powerful. I will own my power. I will own my power. That's right, and you all look like you meant that. Go ahead and have a seat, ladies. Give yourselves a hand. for us to acknowledge and to say that we have power. But history proves it. We've got the data on our side. And like the professionals we are in technology, when we go in the office and we present an idea, we go with the data, we go with the facts. Look at this. I could talk about these for slide after slide after slide. History has proven that we are powerful. Circular saw. I don't know what she was thinking about when she came up with that. <laughs> and I can tell you I was a little surprised that a woman came up with that, and then I wasn't. <laughs> Computer algorithm. So we talk about technology. We built the foundation for this thing that people call technology, the computer algorithm, ladies. That was us. Dishwasher. 
dishwasher. Of course we had to come up with that. <laughs> and, and clearly my mother was not a fan because I was the dishwasher. <laughs> she didn't make that kind of investment. The medical syringe. Can you imagine what medicine would be like without a medical syringe? There are tons of these. Again, we can go over them over and over, slide after slide after slide. And I have so many of these. I want to make these slides available to you because every so often you need to go into a quiet place and you need to pull this up and you need to remind yourself that women are powerful. The other thing I want you to understand is that we are powerful beyond race, gender, age, preference. We are powerful beyond all of the isms that have been put in place to restrict us. And I promise you, just because of human nature, there will be more isms, they won't stop. But we will talk about today how we embrace our power so that we navigate them anyway. <laughs> Bulletproof fiber. Not sure what she was thinking about when she came up with that, but that was an excellent idea as well. <laughs> and then the stir fry pan, yum. Where would we be without the stir fry pan? But I mean, just look at the range of things that we've invented and that we've created as women. Again, we are powerful. Yeah, whatever that is too. <laughs> All right, so we've kind of talked about our power. Let's talk about some other facts. I've had some things happen to me and I wonder if they've happened to you as well. Have you ever walked into a performance review and been unpleasantly surprised? Raise your hand if you've ever walked into a performance review over the course of your career and you've been unpleasantly surprised. Right? But we're powerful. What about these collaboration sessions that we have at work where we get to brainstorm on ideas? We get to figure out the new path our company's going to take. And we throw the idea out there, and by the time we leave the room, no one ever knew it was our, our idea. They didn't even add us to the project to support it. How many times have you said something and it was piggybacked, but you weren't acknowledged? Raise your hand. How many, time does, how many times have you been in conversations that were collaborative that really turned into someone taking credit for or stealing your work and then not giving you credit, right? But, but we're powerful. How many of us have gotten the work, but not the title? Right. And what about the title and the work, but not the pay? <laughs> what about the cleanup work? How many times has it failed and failed and failed, and somebody gave up on it and then just said, oh, we'll give it to such and such, right? And we took it and we turned it around. We're able to do those things because we are powerful. We're able to come up with those ideas in the collaboration meetings because we are powerful, okay? Here are the stats. Women make up 49.6% of the population, the world population. We're the most educated people in the world. Young women are more likely to be enrolled in college today than young men. Among those ages 25 and older, women are more likely than men to have a four-year college degree. And we make up 14% of active duty military members. And thank you to any of you who have served. Here's some more stats. Although we make up 49.6% of the world population, why do we hold so few CEO positions in Fortune 500 companies? <coughs> and for women of color, it's even more dismal. And if you even look at Fortune 1000, you would expect, well, as the number goes up, we would expect that the stat would at least double, I mean, we doubled the number of companies, we should at least double the number of women in CEO positions, that doesn't happen. You can see here the number didn't double with the company. 
And so stat after stat after stat, we continue to see that although we're highly educated, we're very capable, and we have power, we aren't getting these seats. We aren't filling these roles. When I look at this, I say to myself, hmm, there are two ways to look at this graph. One is that we are making gains. We're making gains across all of the areas in corporate America. But we're not making enough. And we're not making them fast enough. If you think about your own company, so I've also been an entrepreneur. So I had a small consulting firm that was really successful. We actually won government contracts, it was awesome. But if I only grew two to 5% over a five year period, that's not gonna work. If you think about your own companies, that's not gonna work. This is not going to move the needle forward the way that we need to. So what's the problem? <laughs> I think part of the problem, we own. Now I'm not here to tell you all about what you're not doing. I'm not here to tell you all that, you know, the world's against us and we're, we're not gonna be able to do anything about it because that's just not true. I also want you to understand that I know that there are isms and issues and all of this isn't our fault. I know that we show up for interviews and we are overqualified and we don't get the roles. I understand how we've been placed, which is why I wanna talk about how we own and embrace our power. All right, now don't hold it against me, but at one point I was a little young and naive. When I graduated from college, I got this offer and I was super, super excited. I was like, yes, I did it. I went to school, I'm getting my first position in corporate America, I am on the path. I am woman, hear me, hear me roar, right? <laughs> this is what I didn't do. I didn't call and ask for help when it was time to negotiate the salary. You guys probably see where this is going. <laughs> I didn't use my network. I didn't own my power. So that's the first spot in place in that journey that I gave up my power. So guess what I ended up negotiating? Anybody want to give it a try? <laughs> nope. Not even vacation. Anything else? I negotiated for a cell phone and a laptop. <laughs> and ended up making about $20,000 less than I should have. Why? Because I was a big girl. I had the answers. I was proving myself. I gave up my power when I didn't ask for help. Oh, but, but it gets worse. I get there, and the job morphed. You guys ever got somewhere in the job morph? Yeah. So I get there in the job morph from what it was in the job description to all of the things that they had me doing. But you know what? I was grateful because they picked me. <laughs> that is the second place where I gave up my power. Not making sure that I understood and they understood the value that I was bringing. Sometimes we can have a scope that's so large that we can't execute anything with excellence. It's okay to say no. And I mean just no. But I'm not done yet. This, this journey just gets better and better. I did manage to do some awesome, awesome work. I was able to take a program they had that had really fallen apart. I was able to clean it up. Because I was able to clean it up, I got bigger and better programs, so I was having success. But one of the programs that I was assigned to ended up being a corporate initiative that had board level visibility. I got to work with external partners, I got to work with the federal government to shape a law that some of you probably have heard of, it's called HIPAA, if any of you are in healthcare. Yes, I got to help develop and craft the HIPAA security rule. I also am proud that I got to help and develop standards like the PCI DSS security standard for cars. So anyway, I'm doing this work, it's going great. They don't give me any actual resources. So they don't give me a team to lead. Instead, they say, you know, Jane, you're so nice and you're friendly, and you know, people like working with you. 
you know, for this effort, what we're going to do is we're going to do a matrix recording structure. No, I like matrix. Okay. Okay, what's that? Well, basically, we want you to go and convince <laughs> these other leaders to give you team members to help you execute this thing. Well, I guess they were right. I am friendly, and, and people tended to like me. So they did. They gave me the resources, and we did a great job. It was time to do a report out to the board. And my boss says to me, you know, it's been a lot of great work in this space. I want you to go and give this presentation to the board. I want you to give an update on your project. <laughs> yeah, that's what imposter syndrome did. She laughed. And she was like, you're not going to the board to give anything. <laughs> and I didn't. You know what I told my boss? Oh no, I, I don't need to go. You know, such and such is going to the board for something already. Is there any way we can just kind of take what I did if I put the deck together together, and I can give it to her and maybe she can go and she can give the update for everything. Now, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about allies and men. He was a guy and he looked at me and he couldn't believe it. And he said, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. He's like, wait, wait. I want you to understand, this is your work. He said, if you are afraid or scared, I'll help you. We'll go through the deck together. He said, I know English is not the first language you learn, but it's okay. We can work through that together. Imposter syndrome, she was laughing. I'm telling you, she was hee hee ha ha cackling. And imposter syndrome said, nope, you're not going to give anything. You're going to get in there. And you're going to use gullible words and everything else. And nobody's going to know what you're talking about. You're going to mess up all the American colloquialisms that you do, et cetera, et cetera. So imposter syndrome helped me dig my feet in the ground. And I said, no. That was the other place where I gave up my power. Well, it went well. The work was great. Most of the executives in the company knew I was doing the work. So, I mean, what was the big deal? Well, I'll tell you what the big deal was. About a month after that, the CEO of our company came down to the division. And he gave a speech. And he said, I am here because I just want to celebrate the great work going on in the information security program. We've been talking about that work. You all have been doing a good job, and I just want to give, show my appreciation to the leader who's been driving that for us. I'm getting ready, y'all. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm getting ready. He steps forward and he says, I would like to call such and such up. And I'm like, wait, wait, my name is such and such. <laughs> he didn't call my name. I want to say it again. He didn't call my name. He called the name of the lady who gave the update to the board. And I shrank back in that crowd like a preteen who had just been embarrassed by her mother in front of her middle school crush. <laughs> I was fortunate. Relationships matter. When we talk about allies, when we talk about coaches, when we talk about mentors, and we'll talk some more about that as we go, it's important to have people in your corner. And I want to explain something to you all about your brand. Your brand will walk you into rooms that your feet cannot. Relationships matter. Now remember this team they gave me didn't report directly to me. They were borrowed, but they spoke up right there in the beginning. They spoke up right there to the president, and they told him, no, no, we, we think you are mistaken. Takesha is the one who led this program. She is the one who should get that award. She's been great to work with. She got a lot of compliments, even from the federal government. We think you've given that plant and that, that car to the wrong person. Now, what I didn't tell you all is that the lady had accepted my plant and my car, y'all. She, ne she never said a word. Never said a word. She just accepted it. And guess what the president did? He actually scratched her name off the car. <laughs> and wrote my name in the car and then handed it to me along with the plant and told me,
me thank you. No, later he did give me a card that didn't have a scratched out name in it. But again, talking about giving up your power. It's scary sometimes. It really is. I'll give you that. It's not always easy, the journey that we are on. But let me tell you a couple of things. No one can ever tell you you can't use the restroom. If you need a moment to just breathe in and breathe out. Let's talk about your story. Know your values. So do your research. Ask your friends. Figure out what people are earning, not just from a base compensation perspective, but equity, bonuses, other things to negotiate for, but I don't recommend that you go negotiate for a cell phone and a laptop at this stage. <laughs> Probably more like some of the things I heard, like vacation, right? Or maybe, you know, um, you get to fly first class if you have to be on a plane for so many hours, something like that. But the other thing about knowing your values, you have to do the work. If you don't do the work, they'll tell you what it is. You don't want them to tell you what it is. Ask for what you deserve. Ask for what you deserve. But in order to do that, you also have to understand what motivates you. So at different stages of my career and my life, I've had different motivators. So I am a mom of six. Oh. <laughs> I have five boys and one girl. Now, I only, I only birthed two of them. Um, my husband and I were licensed foster care parents, and so that's how we got the other children who've been a wonderful <laughs> So, at a certain time in my career, flexibility was more important to me than money. Vacation time was more important to me than money. Work-life harmony was more important to me than equity. So. Ask for what you deserve, but know what it is that you want. Don't let doubt rent space in your head. Don't let imposter syndrome come and dig your feet in when it's your turn to give the update to the board. Wrap it up. There is a trick that I've taught my mentees. It's RAP. Recognize it. What is triggering this imposter syndrome? Did someone say something or do something that's forcing me to feel this way? And then address it. Don't let her ha, ha, ha cackle in your mind. You kick her out of there. You say, uh-uh, no, no, look, I'm a bad chick. Get out of my brain. I'm not only going to go to the board and give this presentation, they're going to say it's the best presentation that they've heard all year. So you, you go somewhere else with that, OK? And then P. Position yourself, protect yourself. This is where you go back and you look at all of those accomplishments that we've had as women. All of the accomplishments that you've had. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're not doing anything, imposter syndrome's not going to show up anyway. Have you noticed that she seems to only show up, right, when there's an opportunity for you to continue to do well? Well, you got that opportunity because you were already doing well. Sponsors, mentors, coaches, and cheerleaders, let me tell you something. <coughs> Sponsors are important because they are the folks who will speak about you in rooms that you don't have access to. Your mentors will give you tools and tips on how to navigate this journey that we're on. Success is a team sport. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you know what I believe about success. It is a team sport. Make sure you have these folks on your team. At a certain level in your career, ladies, you need an executive coach. At some point, that needs to be part of the negotiation because at certain levels, they are just absolutely instrumental. And then cheerleaders, we all need the rah, rah, you go girl, you can do it. Just like we have the theme music that plays as we all come up on stage, you need your own cheering section. This journey is not the easiest and it's not for the faint of heart. But what we've proven as women is that we can do it and that we've done it. Know who is on the bus. All right, this is really important. Remember when I said success is a team sport? I tell this story at a talk that I give from time to time about a mentee who was just bright, 
up and coming. She called me one day and she's crying. She's just sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. I can hardly figure out what this child is trying to say to me. But I'm feeling like it might really be bad, so I need to pull over so that when she calls me back, because I, I can hear her say, I'm going to call you back, and I pull over. And she calls me, she tells me she's been fired. Well, she had only been in the job about six months, and I can't understand how she was fired because she is a superstar. And then she tells me what happened. She had an incompetent team that she allowed to continue to be incompetent, and she didn't discipline, she didn't engage HR. Something blew up, and when the executive leadership team looked at it, and HR looked at it, they fired her and the team. Know who's on your bus. Do not let anybody damage your brain. And if you've got people on your team who don't care about their own performance, they don't care about yours. And as a leader, it is wrong for you to leave them on your bus headed up north when they really want to go down south. <laughs> and every time you pass another point where they can get off the bus and you don't let them off, you're taking them further and further away from where they want to go. Leaders don't do that. We help people go where they want to go. <laughs> and evidently, they don't want to go in the direction you're going in. Know when it's time to go. Sometimes it's time to go. When they don't realize your value, when they don't give you what you have earned, sometimes it's time to go. You need to have criteria that you set so that you know when it's time. And always be learning, always be learning something new. It's important for your brain, and it's important for your brand, and it's important for how we are as women. You know, they say you teach a woman something and you teach an entire nation because we're always learning. Lastly, advocate for others. Sisters, it's not a competition. We should be pulling people up with us. We should be advocating for one another. When we sit in these rooms and Sarah said something and it was profound and then Jack piggybacks what she says and everybody in the room just cheers for Jack as if he's the best thing since the microwave, that's your opportunity to say, oh, hold on, Jack, I think that's great that you agreed with what Sarah said. Sarah, is there anything you want to ask to this great idea you just gave us? Right, we've got to advocate for each other. We have power. We are powerful. We will use our power. Risk Management 101, it's one of my books. It's here if you want it, and I will sign it for you. <laughs> Otherwise, you are welcome to order it off Amazon. Leverage me as a resource. If you ping me on LinkedIn and ask me a question, I promise you I will get back to you because I know how important it has been for the women who have helped me navigate this journey, help you back up imposter syndrome when she shows up to laugh in your face. You let me know, and I will. With that, I'm going to say thank you all very much, and I just hope you remember, please own your power. <laughs>